By early July, 30,000 of the king's troops are taking positions around Paris. To defend themselves, the people form a new national guard. Rioters raid Paris's armories and make away with over 28,000 muskets. The only thing missing is gunpowder, and the people know just where to get it. In the center of Paris, there looms a massive stone dungeon, notorious as a symbol of feudal rule, the Bastille. The prison houses the city's stores of gunpowder and is legendary as a den of torture and unspeakable deaths. The Bastille had been the great symbol of royal despotism, the great symbol of the kings of France running beyond the just limits of their own power, a symbol of horror for the people of France. Amidst the rioting, there is a stunning outrage. Louis fires his finance minister, the people's beloved Jacques Necker, seen as too sympathetic to the masses. Hours after Necker is fired, word reaches Paris that their man on the inside has been ousted. There is nothing left but revolt. On July 14th, crowds band together identifying themselves with a small cockade, red and blue for the colors of Paris, separated by white, the color of the House of Bourbon. The tricolor is born. From the feverish crowd, a voice cries out, to the Bastille. Attacking the Bastille means that the people of Paris are saying, you cannot get rid of the new National Assembly. The people are acting, they're arming themselves, and they're basically saying, we take the side of the revolution. At the sight of the approaching mob, the governor of the Bastille, Bernard de Launay, attempts to lock down the prison. He mounts a hopeless defense and the marauders storm the fortress and tear into the guards with knives and pikes. Finally, Delaunay surrenders, but the enraged mob engulfs him, dragging him through the streets. The jeering horde kicks and stabs at him until he shouts, let me die. The crowd eagerly obliges. He is stabbed and shot, and a revolutionary tradition is born. His severed head is paraded on a pike. Well, the deputies in the National Assembly do not immediately condemn this act of violence. In fact, they accept it. And it was this acceptance of uh, popular violence that, in some people's view, uh, created a pattern that was to have catastrophic consequences for uh, the unfolding of the revolution. With the smoke still clearing over the Bastille, Louis XVI returns from a hunting trip. In his diary under the date July 14, 1789, he writes, nothing, a reference to his unsuccessful hunt. An aide interrupts and breaks the news of the riots and the fall of the Bastille. Louis XVI asks, is it a revolt? No, sire, he replies. It is a revolution. Victory at the Bastille unleashes the irrepressible torrent of revolution. The people had defied their king and won. There would be no turning back. As a symbol of the defeat of tyranny, the people, men, women, and children, dig in with bare hands and tear the Bastille apart, brick by feudal brick. They are beginning to dismantle the past itself. The French went about the process of tearing down the Bastille as quickly as they could. In the absence of powerful explosives, this was done very painstakingly, but with a tremendous amount of vigor. And the bricks were given away, sold as emblems of the demolition of despotism.